Hello students, I welcome you all for our third lecture that is Corporate Financial Mathematics 2. This is the outline. So you see we are going to discuss uh, growing annuities, right? Growing annuities, it means uh, ordinary and, and due we need to adjust and we need to adjust ordinary future value of ordinary and present value ordinary and due also future value and present value we need to adjust okay but in your syllabus normally uh, we discuss growing annuity for most of the time we do present value right future value is not uh, you cannot find many questions for the future value most of the questions are for the present value either it is annuity or perpetuity so same we are going to do growing perpetuity okay and also third case is deferred okay then growing perpetuity after annuity n is given when n is not given then it is called perpetuity then we again classify it like this okay then we have to solve the variables other than the present value or future value right then it means we have to find the c we have to find the n we have to find the r so this is a simple case so these three topics could be discussed and then we are going to discuss these parts topic 4 and 5 uh, sorry topic 4 is actually the transformation frequency and transformation we have to adjust okay it is the, actually the adjustment and then we have to see the application there is one application of annuity we will see how uh, is there any application for the annuity and that is on the loan amortization and the last topic is some factors that affect the interest rate that is interest inflation okay so we will look at this topic okay these this topic is in your time in your mind mapping this is also in your mind mapping these these are not in your mind mapping so these are extras okay i want you to look at uh, first topic is growing annuity first of all we need to understand the annuity first right annuity and in annuity we are actually discussing present value okay because future value we are not discussing much of that so annuity if you see this is annuity you see 10 10,000 10,000 10,000 10,000 10,000 and 10,000 so there is no growth if the can you see any growth no zero growth 10 to 10 again 10,000 zero growth zero growth zero growth so if there is zero growth g would become zero okay so we apply the simple formula of annuity present value of annuity and this is ordinary okay if it is due it would be one plus r simple case but what if there is a growth in the annuity for instance 10,000 first year second year 15,000 then 20,000 then uh, 25,000 then 30,000 okay so there is a constant growth of 5 right you see there is a constant growth of 5k every year okay remember this growth is a constant but this is after every regular interval so n cash flows that increases each year you see at a constant rate remember that is 5% okay if it is 5% or then 9% then 10% this is not actually the constant rate remember okay because the rates are different when we say rates is constant it means it is 5% only 5% if the rate is changing 6% 7% 8% so which rate would you use here you cannot use that so it means the rate should be constant okay so constant rate paid at a regular interval of course this is regular interval is for annuity and for a finite number of periods mean for some specific number of period so we need to adjust the formula so this is the adjustment okay c r minus g which growth constant growth remember 1 minus 1 plus g divided by 1 plus r power n so this is the present value of annuity ordinary annuity with growth okay and we know that without growth i you can see the classification without growth in the mind map and with growth you can see the classifications here and these are the simple thing this is the cash flow this is discount rate or the return of the cost and this is constant growth and remember uh, your required rate of return should always be greater than the growth right 
so this is the assumption then you can find the true answer okay the first cash flow arrives at the end of the first period of course the first flow cash flow is here okay and if you yeah and the first cash flow is before growth and the last cash flow therefore reflects only n1 minus 1 period of growth if you see here this one this 30000 you see this 5% if 5% the rate it started from the first period right first period second period third period fourth period right but this fifth period it is not grown again right there is this last uh, cash flow has not grown okay so it would be n minus 1 and also if you see the first the first actually the period is not grown there is no growth here at this at this part okay the growth started from first period from year one onward right so if you see there is no growth rate here starting from period one and you can see it here so this is 10,000 right and then C 1 plus G so it means you can see the growth here growth is here okay and then C 1 plus G growth 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 and then n minus 1 because the first period is there is no growth in the first period okay so you need to remember why are we uh, applying this formula so it means in n minus 1 the first period out of n 5 periods right the first period is we are doing n minus 1 because the first period is there is no growth in the first periods period and please remember you don't need to to think of the adjustment of this part so this is just for your understanding okay so you need to remember this formula you you should not be worried about uh, 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 this adjustment it's already adjusted here in this formula okay for the example of growing annuity so there is an example that we discussed last time that uh, Ellen she actually wanted to have this uh, annuity remember so she wanted to have uh, 10,000 every year for 30 years um, she will deposit actually okay until she retires at 65 so you see that is 10,000 10,000 10,000 that was a simple case of annuity but let's see she is 35 now when we are saying she is 35 now it means she is at zero right and she will first deposit her first deposit at the end of the first year that is 10,000 okay then the growth will start from onward right so it means this would be grown right let's see what the question says ellen considers saving 10000 per year for her retirement she will retire at 65 although 10000 is the most she can save in the first year first year she will save 10000 she expects her salary to increase each year so that she will be able to increase her savings by 5% per year okay so she expects that every year her saving will increase by 5% with this plan if she earns 10% per year on her savings the return is you see this is return right and what is the G G is here that is 5% on her saving how much will Ellen have at saved at age 65 so when she will be here so what would be her how much would be the savings okay okay so you see first of all this 10,000 10% 10 is greater than G so you can see that we knew that R should be greater than G okay so let's see the question here okay okay I actually draw a timeline for you uh, so that it is easy for us to understand what does n minus 1 mean okay so what is n n is equal to 30 years we know that okay very easy to understand n is equal to 30 so let's see you say that you see that in the first period in the at the end of the first year she deposited 10,000 okay so it means so so first year is already gone okay so how many more years are left for the increment of this 10,000 29 you see so she is she has deposited the first payment here okay so after this deposit then it is going to grow for one period for how many period will it grow 
it will actually grow for 29 periods not for 30 periods okay if she has deposited something here then it will have grown to 5% for year 1 right so remember so you can see it is 29 many students they get confused why they have written 29 it should be 20, 30 but remember because if you count from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 and you will see that when we will be here so at the end of the 30th period the group uh, the n would be 29 okay so remember one thing because the first period has not grown because the cash flow is starting in year 1 so that's why we are using we are using n is equal to 30 okay we are not using n is equal to 29 but you are being told here that actually the growth in the 10,000 has grown for only 29 period okay so number of periods are number of cash flows are actually 30 okay but the growth is done for 29 periods so this, this is you need to actually remember okay but uh, again this is for your understanding you don't need to be worried you just need to apply the simple formula so what is the simple formula so you need to apply 30 no need to do 29 so that is just for your understanding okay so c 10,000 r is equal to 10 percent g is 5 percent you need to substitute the value and the answer would be this one okay so you need to so it means the present value of all the deposits all the deposits she has made she has made what is the present value present value is this one okay so you can find this present value so once you have the present value then the question is asking you how much she will have at the end of when she is 65 then we can find the simple future value future value is very simple once you have the present value then 1 plus r power 30 so you can do that our answer is this answer okay now i know you might be thinking that why are we going to because we need to find the future value so why are we using the present value first and then the future value you can do that but you can also use future value direct formula with the growth you remember in the mind mapping you will find this formula okay so if you substitute the value here so you will find the same answer no problem so you can use a first present value then future value simple uh, compounding you can do that or you can also use the this formula okay so no problem at all now similar to growing annuity now n is not given okay so this is the classification when n is not given when n is not given we call it as perpetuity right a growing perpetuity is a perpetuity that that actually grows at a regular interval and grows it for forever so regular interval is same right constant rate is same what is missing finite period so this is only the missing okay so this is there is no finite there is infinite time period if if it, it has n then it becomes annuity right so that is the only difference so when n is not there so it means we can see the formula of uh, uh, growing annuity r minus g it would only remain the rest of the part will become one okay so it means so we have only this formula left if it is growing perpetuity okay so the first part of the perpetuity if you see if, if you look at this question for instance growing perpetuity with the first payment of 100,100 100, that grows at a rate of three percent has the following timeline okay so it would be the timeline in the timeline would be like that zero first first will not grow remember because you are you are depositing at the end of the period right it's ordinary so that's why you're depositing here so it's there is no growth here the growth always starts from the first period right so you see the formula here so it will keep growing keep growing keep growing but there is infinity so that's why our formula we get this formula so we can use the formula here this formula and the rule is again same r should be greater than growth rate now let's take an example of growing perpetuity in the last lecture you remember uh, 
uh, there was a donation for the college party and the donation was 30,000 and we calculated how much should the person deposit and that was the answer, right? So the answer should, the person should deposit today how much? 375,000, okay? So that every year students have 30,000. But now because the situation doesn't remain same, so there must be some increase in cost. So we need to adjust, okay? You plan to denote money to your alma mater meter to fund an annual 30,000 every year graduation party given given an interest rate of 8% per year so this is interest rate the required donation was present value of this was this was simple case okay in the previous case we had C divided by R it was a simple case but now we are adjusting for the growth before accepting the money however the student association has asked you that you increase the donation to account for the effect of inflation on the cost of the party in the future years okay so first year is okay but after first year the cost is also going to increase and what is the cost of increase that is inflation rate so so we have to adjust so growth is due to the inflation right okay Although 30,000 is adequate for the next year party, the student estimate that the party cost will rise by 4% per year thereafter. To satisfy their request, how much do you need to donate today? So we have to find today how much with this growth rate. So we have to adjust the formula and that is the answer. And if you see, it is nearly the double of the, nearly double of the previous donation, okay? So considering the growth in the inflation, we should not deposit 375,000, we should deposit 70,000, 750,000 to keep that inflation factor. Okay, now we are looking at the third part that is cash flow, rate of return and number of periods. So in the formula of annuity, what if N is not given, C is not given and R is not given, how do we find it? So this is the calculation but with the financial calculator it's very easy but I have uh, solved some part manually so that you understand it properly okay the question says your firm first of all we need to find the loan payment right loan payment we, it means we need to find C here okay very simple case your firm loans to plans to buy a warehouse for 10 100,000 okay this is, this is the price of the warehouse the bank offers you a 30 year loan with the N is given with equal annual payments as an interest rate of 8% R is given. The bank requires that your firm pay 20% of the purchase price as a down payment. So you can borrow only 80,000. So out of 100,000 we can only borrow 80,000. What is the annual loan payment? So every year how much should we make annual payment? Okay. So we need to find the C. So if you are following the financial calculator, so this is the command that you need to follow. But this is the solution if you want to use the scientific calculator or do the manual calculation. So this is a simple formula, you see. Okay, C divided by R, 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R power N. So I, I have written I, so you can write R, no problem. So 80,000 C, we need to find C. But after adjusting the formula, your answer would be 71. Zero 06 in this part we are going to find the interest rate and here you will realize the importance of financial calculator how quick is that to calculate but i will also solve it through the manual calculations so let's see how can we solve this question okay suppose your firm needs to purchase a new forklift the dealer gives you two option option a is a price for the forklift if you pay cash so if you pay cash no problem no problem at all okay so it means you need to pay so of course whichever option would be lower would be your preference because you are paying right buying so 40,000 is the first option cash the second option is the annual payment if you take out a loan from a dealer no money down and a four annual payment of 15,000 so four annual payments of 15,000 is this option good or first option is good so calculate the interest rate charged by the dealer if your form is indifferent between the two options so let's see how can we solve it so first option would no need to solve because that's already cash so present value price is already given so we need to find actually the interest rate what should be the interest rate okay interest rate charged by the dealer how much is he charging because he's saying 15,000 I'm gonna charge you every year for four years so I don't know how much is he charging so let's see how much is R so 
if you see you cannot easily calculate this r okay because one r is here one r is here so there are two unknowns not actually two one unknown but at two different places so let's see how can we solve it so there is no simple way to calculate this one so normally for interest rate for this part we can calculate it by hit and trial method so this is also called trial and error method and in mathematics we call it as interpolation we call it interpolation okay so interpolation means what is the rate we have we are given the left hand side so so we have to equate actually the right hand side with the left hand side with this given unknown okay so if we can find this one that equate our answer this part of the answer to this part so it means we are given one part we need to find the second part okay so we have to equate remember this part so our calculations would be for this part so that this part is also equal to 40,000 so what is the R that actually makes this right hand side of the equation equal to 40,000 okay so let's see so so if you are using financial calculator it's very very easy you just need to input the uh, details and it will give you the answer 18.45 but what if you don't have any financial calculator how can we solve that so this is actually the formula for hit trial and error methods so this is r or interest rate that you want to calculate that we want to calculate that will actually make our answer equal to how much 40,000 okay so this answer actually we need to calculate so how can we do it so interest rate l l mean lower interest rate plus present value of the answer when we use lower rate and present value today that is actually 40,000 actually we want to make our answer equal to this 40,000 okay zero mean what is today's cash uh, present value okay now present value when we are going to use higher rate and minus present value when we are going to use lower rate present value low doesn't mean uh, lower present value okay then the difference between the interest rate higher that we will use and interest rate lower when we will use okay so before before understanding this one so you need to see that present value when we use the present value we use c divided by i so in this question i wrote i but you can write r right so r 1 minus 1 over 1 plus r power n right so remember when we are increasing our r if we increase r you see the pre the present value will go down right if we are decreasing our r the present value will go up right so it means when we will use lower r we will call pvl okay it will be higher answer would be higher you see also the answer would be higher but this higher answer it is at lower rate so that's why this is pvl okay so if r is lower what will happen pv will be higher because there is inverse relationship so you cannot write pv high so you need to just l mean the lower rate not higher pv okay so if so it means we have to use two rates two r's or two i's okay so our answer is we actually want our answer to be 40,000 to get 40,000 we actually want two answers one higher than this 40,000 and one lower this this 40,000 so it means our present value today is 40,000 so what should be the rate that will give us the higher PV PV higher and PV lower right okay so we will get the higher PV when we will be using lower rate you see when we will going to use the lower rate then our PV will be higher right so it means PV L L mean lower rate so when we are using the low higher rate it will it increases then our PV will be lower so we are going to use PVH okay so PVL is at I low right 
interest rate low pv high would be at interest rate high pv high means doesn't doesn't mean higher pv it means at interest rate that is used as higher interest rate okay so you need to remember this one now our pv is 40000 right let's see we use two rates because this is height and trial method so we are using two rates one at 15% and one at 20% okay so let's say what if the rate what if the rate here is 15% what if the rate here is 20% then we need to see how much this PV is okay so actually we need to get two PVs so first of all is at 15% and then 20% remember this 20% is higher rate and this 15% is lower rate higher I am writing it as I H and then I L lower rate okay so if you put 15% in the equation you will get PVL okay PVL mean at lower rate but it would be higher higher than this one okay so you see PVL is here and it is at interest rate 15% and if you use PV uh, 20 I interest rate 20% and if you use the answer the rate is used higher one right so it means the PV would be at higher rate higher rate 20% mean 20% so that is 38,831 okay so we got two PVs so when we are using the lower rate of course we are getting getting the higher PV and when we are using the higher rate we are going to get the lower PV so if you see one answer is higher than 40,000 and one answer is lower than 40,000 so that's all we need okay so we need to replace the values here you see interest rate lower interest rate lower mean which which interest rate was lower 0.15 was the lower one plus PVL present value at the lower rate was the highest one 42824 minus present value when we used when uh, present value that is actually today that is 40,000 okay then divided by PV at lower rate would be again higher PV at higher rate would be lower right then interest rate higher minus interest rate low so that would be the difference so if you substitute the values your answer would be 18.5 percent and if you see these answers are equal with the financial calculator okay so now you can see the importance of financial calculator it can do it very easily but if you do want to do manual so we can do it through the uh, interpolation okay so for the interpolation we have to have a present value that is here in this case 40,000 then we need two rates that gives us one answer higher than this one and one answer lower than this one okay so one answer that will give us a higher answer would be lower rate and our PV would be higher sorry PV would be lower and when will be higher rate our answer would be lower right because we know there is inverse relationship between P and R and our PV would be H not higher but it would be at higher rate okay so once we have these three things one two and three right three major parts we can find it last is solving for the number of periods okay so let's return to the saving for a down payment on a house imagine that some time has passed and you have 10,050 saved already okay and you can now afford to save 5,000 per year at the end of each year also interest rates have increased so that you now have earned 7.25 per year on your earnings or savings how much will it take you to get to your goal of 60,000 okay so this is actually future values given right and how much time it will take we need to find n right so there are two things if you see in this question that some time has passed already and you have 10,050 saved already mean it is today here and you have already made this saving okay so this is one thing and now you can afford to save 5000 per year at the end of each year so at the end of each year you can now afford to save 5000 so this is one saving this is another saving and this part is annuity part you see this is annuity and this is not annuity part 
okay so there are two cash flows one is uh, simple cash flow and the other cash flows are annuity and lastly you are given and also interest rate have increased so that you now earn 7.2 percent per year so r is also 7.2 percent you see here how much will it take you to get your future goal of 60,000 so it means future value is given okay so there is no growth so it means we can use the future value of annuity formula okay we can do that so let's see how can we solve it okay so this is the future value formula okay <clears throat> so you see future value is equal to 10,050 that you have already saved and that is the interest rate power n we don't know 5,000 divided by r and this is the annuity part you remember and this is the simple part we need to find which is equal to fp is equal to already 60,000 okay we need to find n okay so let me let me explain it here I rearrange things for you so the first part is simple compounding part because you this is not equal cash flow today okay so 10,050 n we need to find right so this is the simple compounding and this is the annuity part c divided by r 1 plus i power n minus 1 so you this is the future value of annuity okay you, this formula because we want to make this answer equal to 60,000 now we need to rearrange the formula so that is equal to if okay uh, so if you rearrange this is the mathematical arrangements if you rearrange it you will get this one 1 1.075 n this is the rearrangement and after we want to get n now we want to get, get n actually so we will take natural log of this part so n natural log 1.0752 and this part would also be natural log okay so once we solve it so it would be if you follow this part n natural log 1.075 is equal to natural log of 1.632 so we need to find n so natural log of right hand side divided by this natural log answer so our answer would be seven years okay so it means for seven years for seven years if you deposit 10,050 and 5,000 okay uh, then at the rate of 7.25 then you will get 60,000 at the end of seven years okay so this is using the financial calculator is the easiest way you can do that okay these are just the calculations that actually require some mathematical information so they were not concept that i should have elaborated more so that's why I, uh, so it's up to you to practice more of this part okay now let's get back to our second theme of the topic that is transformation uh, adjustments okay i told you in our timeline that we need to adjust our interest rate on the basis of frequency and some transformations okay some there are actually key words that you normally hear about the interest rates so let's see what are those things so first of all is the nominal and effective interest rates so first of all we will learn this part okay okay but before that frequency can be in a year okay in a year we in, in in that part in the first part of this lecture we discussed that interest rate is given one per a year okay per year thing we were dealing but normally when you deposit sometime you get it uh, monthly return after six month after three month quarterly return right so it also happens like that so frequency of compounding so for instance you have you have deposited today 100,000 in a bank for one year okay so n is equal to 1 remember n is equal to 1 so you have deposited your money for one year in a bank in a bank for one year okay so in in another case you okay so okay let me explain it in a different way there are two banks
there are two banks A and B and you have some you have got some funds that is 100,000 so this bank is offering you 5% and uh, and this is also offering you 5% okay now where and your investment horizon is for n is equal to one year so you want to deposit it is for one year okay so now this bank is saying we will give you the interest rate of five percent four times in a year okay mean quarterly and this bank is saying we will give you the interest five percent two times in a year it means they are paying semi-annual okay so which one would be your preference so it means on your this of course bank a because you are going to get this five percent how many times four times okay and this interest you're going to get it for two times okay so or in other words i would say that whatever you will earn in a year okay four frequency zero year one okay so first quarter three months then six then nine and then twelve okay in the first quarter you will get some funds one of five these funds will again be reinvested these been again be reinvested again reinvested so how many times they have reinvested four times okay and if you see look at this part so 0 6 month and then 12 month first you will get 105 here okay and then it will be reinvested again for the second time so which of the bank is giving you more money it means at this at the end of the year from this bank you are going to get more money than this bank so dollars would be higher than the dollars here right why because your money 100,000 has been compounded how many times four times your money here has been compounded only twice here four times okay so it means in a given year the reinvestment could be one time annual two times semi-annual four times quarterly okay so remember in a statement the question is saying here has been compounded only once a year okay so only once a year mean you deposited money here so it only increased re it, it only got to 105 only once right but if it is compounded more than one in a given year in a given year more than four time two time weekly so better the compounding time better it is for you to earn more okay so it means we can adjust the interest rate based on compounding compounding mean reinvestment this statement is this this slide is very important for you to understand okay okay so your one year can be segmented into 365 days mean your investment would be re your earning would be earning every year you will going to get one plus interest reinvested 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 how many times 365 times so your compounding or reinvestment frequency is 365 in a year okay in a year 52 weeks 12 months and quarterly okay so it means when we are saying the adjustment in the return so it means in a given year how many times the return would be reinvested okay I will write as I will show you a statement where you will understand okay then interest can be compounded more frequently than one time a year of course we understand now common compounding frequency as annual once time a year six months quarterly monthly daily and continuous okay so these are so this is you need to understand when we say the compounded monthly compounded uh, semi-annually compounded quarterly mean in a given year okay 
in a given for instance we are giving to we are given two years so first year compounded quarterly you will get first return here then it will be reinvested 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 four times then reinvested 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 four times okay so n is equal to two number of years are two but they are compounding for how many times every year four times so total compounding would be eight okay so n is equal to total number of investments are five years but in every year your investment is going to be reinvested for two times or reinvestment mean compounded two times so how many compoundings would be there 10 okay compounding mean reinvestments okay now let's get back to nominal and effective rate so this is the differentiation that you need to understand nominal and effective interest rate means suppose you have a credit card which charges an interest rate of 10% per annum per month okay now so for instance interest per month is 1% okay so this is monthly compounding okay monthly compounding is 1% so monthly compounding means in a year 1% every month so how many months 12 months so it means every year how many compoundings 12 compoundings okay so if one year 1% uh, 1 is the rate and 12 are the compounding so what would be the total that would be the total 12% annual okay so let's see let's see okay so 10% 1% per month this would be quoted as an 12% annual rate okay it would be 12% annual rate but it would be compounded monthly okay 12% per year if I say 12% per year then you have it is again next statement is very important okay 10 12% per year then we need to see okay how many times it would be reinvested at this rate and uh, sorry uh, compound uh, 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 what is the compounding frequency that you need to see compounded monthly okay so it means we need to see that 12% okay uh, divided by 12 what is the interest rate 1% so every month this is being compounded okay so you will understand when when we will make a question it would be easy for you to understand yet if you okay yet if you owed uh, 100 on this account $100 in this account and did not make any payment for an entire year the balance at the end of the year would be 112 so this is what they are saying so 12% per year is actually uh, per annual rate that is nominal rate okay this is nominal rate but it is compounded monthly so it will change now okay effect effective rate would be different how let's see the bank's calculation for the balance is 112.68 this higher balance implies 12.6 at interest rate instead of 12 percent so what is the interest rate that is not 12 percent it would be higher why it is higher because of the monthly compounding and it is computed as you see it would be one person right and compounded how many times 12 times compounding frequency is in a year compounding frequency is 12 times so we have to divide uh, we have to divide actually uh, that 12 percent into monthly compounding first and then we will use this rate for how many times 12 times okay to distinguish between these rates we call 12 percent as an APR annual periodic rate and 12.68 as effective annual rate and 1% as EPR you see there are three rates now annual rate is 12% or the nominal rate right nominal rate nominal rate mean annual rate okay or the quoted rate is 12% when we convert it based on the monthly 
frequency is monthly compounding then what what do we get 12 percent and in a month how many times 12 and this one percent is called epr this is called periodic rate and then periodic mean we have already converted it into different periods how many period monthly periods okay and whatever is the answer using this uh, compounding frequency is is called effective annual rate what you actually get what you actually get okay what is actually stated on the face value on the face of the loan plan or investment plan okay so this is actually we are going to discuss these parts now in detail okay what is APR APR is the annual percentage rate or the nominal rate so you banks ask you that you invest in our bank at the 5% per year okay 5% per year so this is actually what APR per year okay then again it is saying compounded quarterly okay so if we if you want to find the compounded quarterly then 5% divided by how many quarters in a year 4 so we need to find 1.5 Two five, right? One one point two five percent. So this is called EPR, mean compounding rate in every period. Okay, compounding rate is one point two five. It will be reinvested, right? Reinvestment rate every period is called uh, EPR. Okay, so reinvestment period that is. Uh, it's not actually re uh, if it is 5% annual then there is no difference but because it is quarterly so we have to convert it okay so what you actually get is what what is important what you actually get is EAR EAR is equal to 1 plus okay 1 plus R power and this is we know the formula you, you, you remember the compounding formula the compounding formula you remember this part pf is equal to pv 1 plus r power n right n is the number of years for your investment but this is not remember this is not your reinvestment compounding frequency okay this is how many time how many years two years one year three years okay so if we take this part then we can find R okay so we need to find this R R is equal to 1 plus effective annual rate is equal to 1 plus R okay power M into M minus sorry minus 1 so let me explain what does it mean divided by M okay so if it is re mean effective annual rate is equal to 1 plus mean total you will get whatever you have invested as a principal you will get 1 and when you will get you have to subtract it to get the rate to get this part okay so if you are adding your principal at the end you are also subtracting it okay no problem so 1 plus r r mean effect uh, uh, annual rate this means annual rate remember this is always annual rate okay r is annual rate annual rate is nominal rate or quoted rate okay so when we divide annual rate with m you see this is m here it becomes what epr okay so this is epr power m okay so but if you use this formula it becomes effective annual rate so so if i say 1 plus r is annual rate annual rate we, what we call annual rate as apr so this is apr divided by m power 
m minus 1 okay but we know that this apr divided by m is equal to epr how do you find periodic rate annual rate divided by number of frequency or compounding frequency this is epr so it means we can also write it like this re is equal to 1 plus epr power m minus 1 okay so let's say let's say if it is annual frequency is annual so it will be 1 it will be 1 no problem okay so let me assume a case if APR compounding is annual okay annual so what would be APR APR let's say it is 10 percent 10 percent APR okay it would be 10 percent okay so this is also this is the quoted rate now what is EPR EPR would be 10 percent divided by m frequency is 1 so it's already 1 so it is 10 percent okay 1 mean annual how many times 1 time if it is monthly it would be 12 okay so APR is equal to EPR if compounding is annual okay then what is ER let's see ER is equal to 1.1 because okay 1 plus APR is 10 percent frequency is 1 so it means EPR is also equal to 10 percent so I can write it like this 1.1 power 1 minus 1 so our answer is 1.1 minus 1 answer is equal to 10 percent so when the compounding frequency is annual then you can see that APR, EPR and EAR are equal so there is no difference but if compounding frequency is uh, let's say semi-annual then it would be different you can calculate it 10 percent is the APR 5 percent would be the EPR and then 1.05 power 2 minus 1 so you can find it okay so this is the adjustment that, that I just did. So what is the uh, interest uh, EPR? EPR is equal to APR divided by M simple, right? For instance, 1% per week for a year. So for a year is, okay. So you need to find if EPR is given and frequency is given, you can find APR. Like in our previous question, you see this question this was EPR was given and you can find APR that is equal to 12 percent how you got it 1 percent multiplied by 12 so 1 percent is EPR this is M you got EPR so same is true here right EPR is equal to APR divided by M if anything is missing you can find it right 18 percent per year compounded monthly so we need to find EPR right 18 percent per year then compounded monthly mean reinvestment is 12 monthly so divided by 12 this is the answer so to calculate ER from an APR we know that how can we find it okay so so you can also write it like this EAR is equal to because if you take this one here it will become the same formula so it would be 1 plus APR divided by m so you are finding the power m but because there was one plus here so we are taking one plus here to this side so it, the formula becomes like this and also we know that this part is equal to epr so you can see epr is here okay so i can also write it like this here for you one plus epr power m minus one okay so this is the formula and you can also adjust the formula to get the EPR. So you need to remember these formulas. If you adjust this formula, you can do that. So this is just the adjustment. Okay. So please do the adjustment here. It's very easy. Okay. This is just the adjustment. Effective annual rate of 6% APR with different compounding periods. Compounding periods mean compounding frequency. Rem remember. Okay. 
compounding frequency mean the investment frequency how many times the investment is reinvested in a period in a given year okay so so if it is annual what is the er er is equal to 1 plus apr power m power m minus 1 okay so let's see if this is for one year okay so we do 1 plus 0 0.06 power divided by 1 power 1 okay uh, minus 1 so this is for one year mean n is equal to 1 so that's why it's not mentioned okay if we have more years then you will adjust accordingly okay but for 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 only one year we can got it get it okay so this is six percent because if it is er apr is annual so er is also annual no problem but if you see if we are increasing the frequency to it is increasing right frequency is higher it is also increasing if it is annual daily the frequency the rate is highest okay so it means if the reinvestment is rate is higher okay so here the dollars would be higher okay so you need to remember the higher the reinvestment or compounding frequency in a year higher would be the future value or higher would be the rate actually this effective annual rate what you would actually get Now, as you can see uh, in the previous example, when I was giving 5% case of two banks, actually I didn't adjust it 5%. Uh, I should have it adjusted that. That was just initially, okay, initial uh, uh, explanation of the topic. So that's why I didn't do that. So effective annual rate actually helps you if two banks are offering two different rates effective annual rate helps you which one to choose higher the effective annual rate better it is okay so for instance 8.45 percent per annum compounded monthly and 8.56 compounding quarterly so normally i told you higher the frequency better it would be but if it is the case 8.45 and 8.45 monthly and quarterly then there is no question we are going to prefer this part okay but because there, the, there are two rates here, okay, one is higher, but frequency is lower, rate is lower, but in frequency is higher. So which one should we choose? Then we can use EAR to decide, okay. So what does EAR says? For the first one, EAR says 8.785, but the B part it is saying 8.83. So we are going to choose the B part okay because the higher amount is higher interest rate first payment is uh, uh, compounded at the higher rate and it keeps on uh, reinvested at the higher rate so that's why we are going to prefer this one so in situations where you can't decide year would help you to find which option to choose okay this is very important important for you to understand when should we use ear or epr first of all is ear or epr okay Okay, ER is only appropriate when calculating present value or future value of a single cash flow. Okay, we normally use future value is equal to PV1 plus R power N, right? So we normally use EAR. When numerical problems are associated with the periodic cash flows, means these cash flows are periodic. Let's say we have some periodic cash flows okay such as annuity or perpetuity then you must use epr so epr is preferred then epr is appropriate in all cases normally in epr is appropriate in every case why if you let me tell you even in the first case we can use epr you see future value is equal to pv 1 plus apr is the annual rate but if it is compounded monthly so it would be 12 and then 12 okay and if 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 
investment and we are assuming n is equal to 1 right okay, okay let me draw it again for you so n you are investing for 5 years and interest rate is 10% compounded number 1 annual and number 2 I also take a case of semi annual okay so actually you can adjust this formula future value is equal to PV 1 plus R R is actually annual periodic rate okay APR then first case is annual so it means 0 0.10 divided by 1 how many years 5 right and 5 is the number of years and in this m is equal to 1 here m is equal to 2 mean compounding frequency okay so this was m m was equal to 1 so that's why it's 1 and m is equal to 1 multiplied by m so that's why it's not affecting so even if I write m, uh, 1 okay so it's same so let's take the second case f e is equal to p v 1 plus 0 0.1 m is equal to 2 so you will do 2 number of years 5 m is equal to 2 how many 2 okay so that's why normally in this formula we have n, n, n into m r over m okay but normally when the questions when you are given the questions r is given let's say 10 percent and interest rate is given sorry n is given let's say two years and if it is semi-annual we adjust it already we do it we adjust it before putting it in the formula by 10 percent divided by 2 so this is epr and we also multiplied by interest rate n with the 2 with the m okay so this is equal to 4 so we normally adjust it normally we use epr in every situation if it is annual then of course epr is equal to epr is equal to epr if it is annual but if it's not there so it means in the question you need to adjust it before putting it in the formula so it means every interest rate you have to adjust in the interest rate and n okay so you have to adjust this m so you have to divide interest rate by m and you have to multiply by n with m okay if it is annual it would be still interest rate and it would still be n but if it is semi-annual it would be divided by 2 it would be multiplied by 2 okay so this is you need to adjust okay APR itself cannot be used as interest rate discount rate factor of course we cannot use that EPR is used if an EPR is quoted with the annual compounding and annual cash flow so when can actually APR be used as a discount rate when it is annual of course when APR is annual then EPR is annual right if frequency is annual EPR is annual APR is equal which is also equal to EAR in that case it can be used okay normally EAR is greater than APR we saw that 12.68 was higher than 12 percent okay so the question is when can we use APR as a discount rate it is when we have annual cash flow or M is equal to 1 now we need to learn converting APR to EPR and EAR Jim has purchased 100 savings note with a two-year maturity so it means maturity is 2 year n is equal to 2 and the contract states that note has a 20% APR APR is straight away 20% pay and pays interest quarterly okay so you can also see this statement pays interest quarterly in normal question you will say that 20% annual rate compounded quarterly you can also find it like that okay what's the note actual interest rate per year that is APR okay actual actual sorry actual interest rate per year and per quarter so the actual interest earned on the note per year would be EPR EPR is equal to 5% per quarter and what is the actual interest he actually got would be EAR right per period would be EPR in in a year how much he got is 21.5% okay number two is how much money will he have at the end of year two so it means future value is equal to PV 
1 plus r power n. So remember, remember we can also solve it like this PV 1 plus we know I told you that we have to divide m on interest rate and you have to multiply by multiply m with n okay so you can do it before or you can do it after in the formula okay so so this is what this is epr okay how much is the epr epr is 5% you see epr is 5% and m would be how much it would be 8 so that's why it's 8 so you can do that but if if you are using EAR right so it means if you are using EAR so you need to use how which rate sorry if it is using you are using EAR so it means you have to first find the EAR that is 21.5 percent and you when you are using EAR then no need to change n it would be 2 okay so if FV is equal to C 1 plus R okay R mean effective annual rate power n so n would be 2 it means it is already adjusted right so that's why we got 21.5 so answer would be the same so if you if you are confused and you don't need don't know what to do simple whatever rate is given that was how much 20 percent right so the rule is you have to divide interest rate by m and you have to multiply n with m if it is because it is quarterly m is equal to 4 m is equal to 4 20 divided by 4 it is 5 percent and because it is n is equal to 5 years for m or 4 so it is sorry it is 2 years or it is 8 so once you got it so it's very easy to no need to no need to get confused simply use the values here pv 1.05 that is epr and then 8 simple okay Okay, let's take a question uh, converting the APR to EPR. <clears throat> so your firm is purchasing a new telephone system that will last for four years. So n is equal to four. You can make you can purchase the system for an upfront cost of 150,000. So this is the price PV. You can do that, or you can lease the system from the manufacturer for 40,000 paid at the end of each month. So 4,000 at the end of each month for four years, okay? And uh, because n is equal to four and m is equal to monthly. Monthly mean 12, okay? So how many how many cash flows do we need to make? 48, okay? M is equal to n into m is equal to 48, okay? The total periods are 48 the lease price is offered for 48 month lease with no early termination you cannot end the lease early your firm can borrow at an interest rate of 6% per APR with monthly compounding you see so the compounding is monthly payment is monthly no problem so uh, you should you purchase the system outright or pay the pay 4000 per month for the question is whether you should buy it at the price of this one or you should you go for the option B whichever whichever option would be lower we will go for that option so uh, this is the timeline so 4000 every month for how many months 48 months and now we need to actually for this question we have to adjust n is equal to 4 APR that is given already 6% we have to adjust these two parts I, as I told you you have to multiply the frequency n into m and APR divided by m so n is equal to 4 it is 12 so you got why how much 48 and APR was 6 percent six percent divided by 12 so that would be 0 0.5 percent it means 0 0.005 okay so this is epr now you got it so once you get it it's easy to use it in the formula so pv is equal to c r mean epr okay and this is r is epr n means you have already converted payments how much 48 so this is the answer so if you buy it 
on cash you pay 150,000 so if you lease you have to pay this much so which option is good of course option A buy it in on cash now we need to see the application of annuity and the application is loan amortization okay so amortization describes how the principal amount borrowed is repaid over life for, for instance if you have uh, borrowed 100,000 from a bank how are you actually paying this back to the to the bank so for instance if you are paying 5,000 every month in this 5,000 5, how much is the interest rate and how much is the principal that you need to actually find so so annuity actually helps us to find the loan amortization so first of all it will help us how much is the C mean how much should we pay every month every period so that would be C right and then it would through C we can find how much is the interest rate and th how much is the principal so it means we can use the annuity formula PV is equal to C divided by R 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R power N so this could help us to find C actually once we get C then we can find rest of the part very easily okay so when with an amortizing loan each repayment includes interest and repayment so you can see this part of, of the principal reducing the amount you will still owe with each payment you owe less towards principal of course every month that you are paying our total uh, borrowing would reduce right our total balance would reduce and we can do it through the amortization schedule so you will understand it once we get the schedule okay consider a 30 year car loan with these terms 6.5 30 year consider 30,000 sorry car loan so this is the present value now uh, 6.75 is the APR for 60 month okay so it means 6.75 so we have to it is monthly so divided by 12 okay and uh, 60 months mean 60 divided by uh, months it would be five years of course it is for five years but it is already 60 months it is already converted but we have to convert interest rate okay so n is equal to 60 apr would be we need to convert it pv is equal to 30,000. we need to find epr that is 0 0.00625 per month and then if we apply it in the formula formula is same this formula is here uh, P is equal to C divided by R 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R power N so they have arranged this formula to find C and C means 590 we should pay okay so every month we have to pay 590 to the bank because we have taken a loan of 30,000 now this is amortizing loan and it's a schedule that we need to understand okay so first of all we are starting from year 0 and total payments would be 60 payments so this is this is actually the periods not year okay and beginning balance of course today there would be no beginning balance the total balance would be this loan amount 30000 okay so 30000 is the is the now the beginning balance okay at the end of the period was the actually beginning balance how much is the payment that we paid 590 590 so this is C actually okay that we got so 590 is the total payment out of this 590 how much is the interest and how much is the principal okay because these two parts make C so once we understand this one then how much are we going to find the remaining balance remaining balance would be it would be uh, your this is the principal okay so the remaining balance balance would be uh, the the beginning balance normally this balance minus your principal this one okay so how can we calculate this part it would be your beginning balance minus principal so you will get this answer now how do we get these two parts this is very important to understand okay so it means if we can find interest rate this is easy easily we can find it 
if we can find interest rate then we can subtract c minus interest rate we can get p okay we can do that so but the question is how we find interest rate interest rate is equal to uh, beginning balance multiplied by interest rate okay what is the beginning balance in the first year that is 30,000 30k multiplied by what is the interest rate interest rate is 0 0.005625 0 0.005625 and our answer is 168.75 okay so this is you got it actually so you this is the installment that you pay out of this installment how much is the interest rate this is the interest rate and how much is the principal this is the principal so how much is the remaining now we actually got the beginning balance minus the principal so this is how it will fall okay so in the next period the closing of the first period would be the beginning balance of the next period okay so this is the beginning balance this is installment they will keep constant you see they are constant okay they are constant and if you see uh, if you see interest rate it will keep decreasing why because interest rate is beginning balance minus multiplied by interest rate when the beginning balance is decreasing of course interest rate will also decrease so also the principal amount will also if you see from here it will increase because interest rate is decreasing this is constant so of course principal amount would be higher okay so interest rate is decreasing this is constant of course it will increase and you will begin the loan balance would also decrease to zero so if you follow this you can easily find it okay so 29 multiplied by 0 0.005625 would give you this interest rate this interest rate mine uh, this uh, payment minus interest rate would you will get this uh, principal once you get this principal so beginning balance minus principal you will get this loan balance and at the end you will totally amortize this loan okay this is the graph showing the actually the amortization loan through graphical picture if you see interest rate actually would start decreasing and if you see this principal amount principal amount will start increasing and it it will end at 587 point so you see 587 would be nearly here so this is actually the graphical depiction depiction of uh, this amortization table and this is the remaining balance that would it started at uh, 30,000 it will reduce to 0 in 60 months okay so this is just graphical explanation okay here is the situation let's say that you are now three years into a 30,000 car loan so 33 th three years are already done so it means you have uh, you have paid 36th installment and it means three years are complete now so how many more installments are left 24 for two years okay so you are here already at zero okay because you have already paid this much it means you are current situation would be zero here okay so how many more payments do you need to make so 24 payments so it means how much you should pay back to the bank so that you can sell the car and decided to sell the car when you sell the car you will need to pay whatever the remaining balance is on your car loan after 36 months of payment how much do you still owe on your car loan that's very easy because you're here and you need to find PV actually because the C is given that is 590 it's, it will not change r will not change only one thing will change that is n that is instead of 60 now we have 24 so this is the answer so you have to pay back this much of money to the bank and then you can sell the car okay now we have a topic of inflation and real versus nominal uh, nominal interest rates the rate at which your money will grow if invested for a certain period okay okay this is actually the stated rate the same rate that we learned that uh, the growth rate would be five percent but in actual it, it is not the case okay quoted interest rates are the actually the nominal interest rate real rate is actually the rate that is uh, that we calculate after adjusting the inflation 
okay how can, can we calculate the real rate so that is nominal rate minus inflation rate okay so divided by 1 plus inflation rate so in other words you can also write it like that nominal minus inflation rate okay so that would be your uh, uh, real interest okay as we know with the inflation our purchasing power reduces so that's why you see that uh, the growth in the purchasing power can be calculated as 1 plus real rate okay so how can we find that 1 plus real rate is equal to 1 plus nominal rate divided by 1 plus inflation rate so 1 plus nominal is actually the uh, growth rate growth of money okay and this is growth of prices because inflation is related to the prices okay so this is actually a simple topic not uh, very much uh, related to the question that we will practice but somehow it is related okay so this is one thing that you need to note is real interest rate should not be used as a discount rate for future cash flows so using nominal rates to discount if it is annually compounded okay so we are going to use the nominal rate so you shouldn't be worried about this statement once we see the question it would be easy for you to understand okay calculate the real interest rate at the start of 2008 one year's US government bond rates were 3.3 percent so this was the nominal rate or the quoted rate while the inflation rate was 0.1 percent at the start of 2011 one year interest rates were 0.3 3%. So it means interest rate decreased from 3.3% to 0.3 and the inflation rate that that year was 3% Okay, so inflation rate rose, rose while interest rate decreased. What were the real interest rate in 2008 and 2011? First of all, we need to find the uh, real interest rate in 2008 that is uh, quoted rate right minus uh, inflation divided by 1 plus inflation that you can see it here nominal rate minus inflation rate 1 plus inflation rate you will get 3.20 okay so now what happened your your earning is 0.3 percent mean uh, your return is 0.3 percent while inflation rate is very high if you see 3 percent so of course your purchasing power would decrease so that is 0 0.3 and negative 2.62 percent you see that real interest rate is negative 2.62 percent and your purchasing power it means it has decreased a lot why it is higher than the um, interest rate okay so that's all